looks at one company's solution to dealing with recessions. We don't have no opportunity to get to the seventy thousand. There's trouble in paradise. At Lincoln Electric, long an example of manufacturing success, some workers are upset. We have lost approximately one dollar out of every five we used to make. And that bottom line is, 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 is staggering. That's why we're here. The recession hit Lincoln hard, but almost unique among U.S. manufacturers, there were no layoffs, and haven't been since World War II. Now, you got to understand, we're, we're doing well, I think, as a company. All you got to do is drive around here and look at the plants that are empty. Uh, you know, that's why we bought the plant across the street. The one next door is that they went broke. Uh, this system is doing something good, isn't it? Don Hastings, who's about to become the CEO, runs a lean, rugged company. There's no union here. There aren't even any paid sick days. But with an absolutely secure paycheck, workers seldom leave. Moreover, if Rust Belt America can remain competitive in manufacturing, Lincoln Electric may well be the model. Dawn at Lincoln's main plant just outside Cleveland. Inside, most workers seem satisfied. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I'll be here forever, I hope. You know, I, it's a great job. You know, it really is. When you get a job at Lincoln, after three years, it's for life. A dazzling feature of this Rust Belt firm, considering that they manufacture arc welding equipment here, the kind of work America's been losing for decades. You have a weight off of you because you know you have job security. And that's, a, that's the greatest feeling ever. It's the greatest feeling. Where you can go out and spend your money without worrying about, geez, am I going to get laid off next month? I'd rather go on a four-day week or move to a different machine than go out and look for another job. Now, the key to Lincoln's no layoff policy is profit sharing. You're guaranteed 30 hours a week and a share of the profits in the form of a yearly bonus. The average worker here made 23000 last year, another 19000 in bonus on top of that. And for Lincoln, that was a low bonus because profits were down due to the recession. But the bonus would have to vanish completely before they'd need to lay anyone off. Harvard economist Martin Weitzman. The mechanism is that uh, the pay adjusts automatically so that a worker is being paid less when times are bad and is automatically being paid more when times are good. So the system is adjusting through pay rather than through numbers of workers employed. Weitzman calls this system a share economy, in which every firm shares both the risks and rewards by giving workers a large part of their pay based on the profits of the firm. It's already true of farmers, for example. If farming were run in the analog of a factory system where a farmer was paid a fixed wage, farmers would be laid off during bad times and we wouldn't have as much food in the world as we have. The same holds true for authors. Most of them get only a modest advance payment from publishers. Any additional income is paid as a percentage of profits, when there are any. If publishers paid a fixed salary instead, They'd be much more cautious. There'd be far fewer books written. There'd be far fewer authors employed by book publishing companies. How are you today? Fine. The point is, profit sharing keeps people working, lowers the incentive to lay them off when times get tough. And in fact, Lincoln is hiring these days. Okay, Curtis, why the interest in Lincoln Electric Company? Well, I've heard you're a very reputable company and that uh, you take care of your workers and you're a good company to work for. It may sound rehearsed, but in fact, if this guy gets hired and makes it through the first 90 days, one in three people finds it too tough, then odds on he'll be a lifer at Lincoln, and a loyal one. Turnover here is extremely low. The average employee has been here 18 years, virtually every day. How long have you worked here? 24 years. How many absentee years? Two days, I can remember. Two? Two. Just think of it. Two days absent in 24 years. Profit sharing means no layoffs. No layoffs means loyal workers. And research on profit sharing firms suggests that they're generally more successful as well. But profit sharing by itself isn't likely to make American manufacturing more competitive. First, most profit sharing systems don't share anywhere near the portion of profits that Lincoln does. Second, most profit sharing companies don't deal with the so-called free rider problem. That is, if you work in a profit sharing firm, there isn't much incentive to generate greater profits since they have to be shared with everyone else in the firm. So the little voice of self-interest whispers, let the other guys do it. I'll get a free ride on the profits they generate. 
Lincoln Electric, however, has an answer to the free rider problem. The discipline of piecework. Because at Lincoln, more than half its 2,700 employees have no base wage at all. They're paid strictly by how much they produce. The more pieces they make, the more money they make. That's one reason they work so hard at Lincoln, says Teresa Melfi, whose male workers teased her with a pink hard hat when she became their foreman. I very seldom have to remind anybody of it. They, they come home with their paycheck after two weeks and, uh, you know, hand it over to their wife or something, and, and uh, if it's not big enough, I'm sure she reminds them. Piecework is a powerful incentive. Robert Nicholson, for example, lunches while he works, never escaping the noise. This place keeps you a lot busier. You know, like I said, they give you the bonus at the end of the year and everything. So it, it makes it nice, you know. So, great. <laughs> yeah, so it, it's, it's nice. And I don't mind doing this, you know. The company does well. I do well, so. Yes, they work hard. But in piecework, it's not just you do it harder. You get smart. I mean, you learn ways to become more efficient just in the way you do your own job. And that person who does that every day, day in and day out, learns how to do things that will help his time and motion and effort. So it's not just hard work, but it's smart work. And that's what makes them money. And we want that to happen. We want them to actually come in and try to beat the system we've set up for them. Because the more they make, obviously more the, more the company's going to make. Now, to compete with lower-wage foreign manufacturers, Lincoln has to keep cutting its costs. So it keeps lowering its piece rates, the amount it pays each worker per piece. The company installs new machinery to help workers produce more per hour and thus make back the money. But those workers you saw at the start of this story had their piece rate cut a year ago, and their pay still isn't back to what it was. I started here 27 years ago. They used to stand in a pulpit when he gave us our bonus and tell us you're the highest paid worker for any given job in the world. Since then, we've gotten cuts. I'm making one of me 20 years in. My mailman's making more than I am. We've gone through price cuts in 27 years, but we've always been able to survive and make out and eventually made back the money. They keep talking, but it's five minutes to the four o'clock shift change and no one is late at Lincoln. John Rogers now joins from the day shift. There's nowhere in the world with a high school education that I could have made the money that Lincoln has offered me or provided me or has left there for me to make. So they're not complaining about the system. They're just complaining about this one particular price cut. The system has provided me with luxuries, vacations, more than my neighbor, more than this, more than that. But this is a particular area that we feel that uh, needs to really be looked at because we're uh, kind of more or less going backwards. So who's being blamed for the price cut? A familiar scapegoat in America's industrial history, the I'm time study man. Early this century, jobs were first timed and rated by experts, workers paid by the rate per piece. By the 1950s, the time study man had become a cliché. As in the great musical about the textile industry, The Pajama Game. That's how it is. I'm an executive. I'm a time study man. I've got my stopwatch on you. Can't waste time. Hurry up! Here at Lincoln, time study men are somewhat less colorful, but still controversial. In its constant effort to raise productivity, Lincoln may occasionally push too far. Especially with the third key part of the Lincoln system, the report card. To put it graphically, there are three interrelated parts to the Lincoln system. Profit sharing, piecework, and your personal report card. Your yearly bonus depends on total profits and your twice yearly grade or rating. You're graded on a curve against fellow workers. The company average has to be 100. Grades range from about 70 to 130 based on quality, output, dependability, and cooperation. The key element is that the rating is competitive. And this is why I think the Lincoln system has survived since 1934, when most other profit-sharing plans and bonus systems have gone down the tubes is that it's competitive and each individual is fighting for points which then turns into money and so that competitive nature is what keeps this thing alive in my opinion